All right, guys, welcome back to the Make or Break show. We're hanging out today with Walker calling in from Vegas. Very first, I think, guest from Vegas. He got the lights and everything to show. Uh, yeah, working at a full spectrum laser, excited to uh, chat about you. Uh, your kind of background in making as well as all the crazy stuff you guys do with lasers over there. But man, thank you so much for jumping on and uh, chat with me. Excited to get into everything that you're working on. Yeah, thank you for having me. Totally. I'm excited. Yeah, man. Uh, well, I would love to hit, uh, kind of before we get to full spectrum, just to give folks kind of uh, your background a little bit. Um, how did you how did you get to full spectrum and like into the laser world? Um, <clears throat> it's kind of a long story, but I mean, to, to sh shorten it up a bit, I guess. Um, I was going to college. Um, I was actually working at a gold mine in Alaska. And Wait, what? Where? Where at? Uh, uh, so there were a handful of places like in the middle of nowhere, but the last place was called um, well, Admiralty Island. So okay. Admiralty Island, if you don't know about it, has the largest population of grizzly bear in the world. Good night. It's it's got one grizzly per square mile. It's crazy. So, so like like gold rush, like that type, like when you think of, of doing gold mining. <laughs> like panning no yeah. uh, um actually they had an underground mine but our division was doing exploration drilling on top of these mountains so we're drilling like i have a giant drill rig it's going down like thousands of feet you know and my job was the henchman to pull it all out as it's going label it for the geologists and all that so that ties into everything because i'm going to college and i'm doing this job to support myself and you know my last stint up there the drill rig actually came down on my arm oh, wow. and, and pinched it. And uh, luckily I came out with my arm intact, but um, it was extremely damaged. Not, not so bad that I needed, but we were in the middle of nowhere, Alaska. So thank goodness it wasn't worse. But um, so I come back home and my girlfriend at the time's like, you know, you're done with that job. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I, I didn't know what to do. You know, I've just been doing that as supporting myself, going to school and, you know, I, and um, I go on Craigslist and I just look for a job and I actually applied for an assembly position here five years ago. So it's so, kind of just evolved into all kinds of craziness. Are you from that area? I'm from Las Vegas. Oh, you're from Vegas. Okay, cool. Yeah. So how did you get to Alaska? Uh, via airplane. <laughs> <laughs> How did you even know that was like a job that you could you could do? Um, my dad's a geologist. So uh, okay, cool. He, he kind of had the hook up there, and you know, it, it's funny because the interview process they they just called me and they were like, "Are you a wuss?" And yeah. I was like, "No, uh, no." You know, I'm like 20, 20 something at the time, and I'm like, "Absolutely not." And they were like, "Okay, well, you're hired." That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy yeah i uh i asked because i lived in i was born in alaska i live in georgia now and oh, so I'm sorry no it's it's <laughs> uh it's fine. actually it's not too bad out here uh it's just warm but i guess it's hotter where you are but uh yes yeah, so i was in alaska for for a little bit and uh it's just crazy i usually don't hear too many people that have been been up there but so you come back to vegas and um you apply to a, an assembly job. Like, had you done anything on like the laser side of things or was it literally just a random Craigslist ad that you fell? I mean, so I've always had a mechanical background, so that kind of helped. But um, at the time we were making 3D printers and it just kind of, you know, it, 3D printers back then, everybody was all talking about them, you know, they're the future, all this and that. And um, I just thought it was interesting. So I applied and they said, you know, we won't have you in assembly. You seem like you're better fit for support. So I started in support and I was the only, they just had a 3D guy support leave and uh, I was the only one. And I just, you know, I took to it because my background was sculpture. I was super excited about oh, cool. 3D printers. Is that what you went to school for? Like for, for uh, I actually, I did. And then my dad's like, you know, nobody makes money being an artist. So right. until you're dead. Um, so I actually went to school for biology. I switched my major so many times. I I actually got over school. And while I was going to Alaska, I wanted to be a helicopter pilot. So oh, that's cool. what I did for a little bit. And um, 
Yeah, and then I found this job and my whole life changed. So I just fell in love with 3D printers, laser cutters, all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, so how long did it take till you got to the role that you got now? Um, I think I started, I want to say five years now. Oh, wow. So you've been there, been there for, for a while on yeah. the laser side of things. Like, do you remember kind of your first project or first time that you kind of like, Oh, wow, this is, this is some pretty cool stuff that you can make. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because I was not about the lasers, you know, I was the 3d printer guy. Right. I, I love the sculpture side of things and I, I had a graphics background and that's why I eventually went to marketing, but uh, I wasn't super excited about them until I realized, you know, I, I don't know what clicked in me because it's very obvious, but like my graphics in the design program can come to life. And, you know, it's it. I remember the first time I used it, we really didn't have I mean, at the time I started, there were 25 people here, I think. And uh, nobody really used the lasers internally. Oh, really? OK. Yeah. Except for like mostly kind of testing the software, this and that. And um, so I kind of learned it like as anybody would just learn on their own. If, you know, if they were purchasing it and they didn't have any manuals or anything, I just kind of figured it out. You know, I had some guidance here and there, but um, we were still fairly, fairly new. You know, our software at that point was a lot more simple than it is now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, was there a, like, do you do projects, uh, like personally, or do you find like most of the stuff that you, you do, you've got kind of the marketing hat on and you're thinking through like, is this something cool that, that folks would be able to, to want to replicate? Uh, it's probably bad to say, but I like doing whatever I want. And I think people, <laughs> will, I think people will think it's cool. Right. So, right, right. um, if I have an idea, like last week we did some stuff for a Batman thing I'm working on and, uh, you know, I just, I wanted to show that off. It's so yeah. uh, most of the time it's, I want to say something I want to do personally. And then we say, okay, well, you know, people will like this as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, what were you saying? No, no. No. Uh, so, um, for people that haven't used uh, a laser cutter, like, like the folks that are listening to this are definitely in kind of the maker world. And mm -hmm. so they'll, they'll know what they are. But for folks that maybe that aren't, and like you tell them what they do and you say like, I work for full spectrum and they're like, what's that? Like, how do you describe what a laser cutter slash engraver can do to folks that just have no like point of reference to it? I, I still think about that question to this day. It's kind of hard. Uh, like, like I said earlier, kind of turning those just graphics into reality is extremely powerful. If, if you have something that already exists and you want to add, you know, somebody's name to it or something like that, I think, that that's sort of the easiest way to put it is, you know, you can personalize something and then it goes even deeper as you can make anything you want. Um, you know, it, I really think the lasers are only limited by your imagination. And that's what I think is really cool about them is, you know, telling people, you know, if you can think it and design it, it's reality. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's kind of hard to, for, to uh, obviously, you can see it's hard for me to put into words how awesome they are and somebody who has no idea what they do, you know, it, it, it's overwhelming. You know, you want to engrave on a, a rock, you know, you can do that. If you want to cut wood, a giant sign or whatever, you know, put your name on something. It just has so many facets that are really interesting. Yeah. And so do you guys, are your customers, um, do they range from like hobbyists to like all the way up to like industrial that, the folks that are using your guys' lasers? Yeah. Uh, also, what's difficult is that we have customers that are, like you said, completely, they just think it's cool and they buy, you know, a Muse yeah. laser cutter. They're like, have all these dreams and expectations and they buy it and, you know, they're, you know, Susie Homemakers, I guess, you know, that type of maybe hobbyists. And then all the way up, we have giant flatbeds that are, you know, what eight foot by four foot we have giant compact lasers that cut metal we've sold to google and oculus oh cool so you know that's a huge range corporate yeah. all the way to you know your average joe what's the craziest thing you've seen made 
with one of your guys' lasers? That's a, I knew you were going to ask this. <laughs> uh, or it doesn't um, have to be crazy. It's like maybe one of the, like the craziest or crazier situations. Um, I uh, the only thing that really comes to mind is like the automata. Uh, okay. I, I love automaton uh, things and the more gears and motion, something's going on, you know, you crank it, it starts moving, coming alive. I think that's crazy. Um, one of my personal favorite like projects that we made here was the, I always say this, it's the Kraken. We made a giant, yeah. a giant um, light up octopus. And I, that was my favorite project because I thought about it for a long time. I wanted to make it. And I had to design it, make it, take all the photos, all this and that in like one and a half days. So it was nuts. And it, it's a cool project, but to me, it's even more cool because it was like so rushed and yeah. it, it came out pretty awesome. So when you're doing a project like that, like how much, like what are you using to do the design work? Mostly my brain. Um, <laughs> now, uh, I personally use Inkscape. Okay. I use Inkscape. It's free. It's awesome. It works uh, export wise with our software very good. Um, well, I know a lot of people, and I've used it before, is the Autodesk uh, slicers and all that. Um, I, I find that that has a lot of cleanup afterwards. Yeah. And I, I might as well just design it myself. So. Um, yeah, I mostly use Inkscape. I think Tim, uh, who's on the show with me, he uses Illustrator mostly. Okay, cool. And so are you just basically just getting like a DXF file or like an SVD or something and then pulling it in to your guys' interface? Yeah, so anything I design, um, we just save as a PDF and drag okay. and drop in. Oh, cool. Um, but you can drag and drop any file format into our software or print from any software as well. That's crazy. So uh, the Muse, right, is kind of the the hobbier, hobbier, ho the hobbyist, more like the kind of the weekend workshop, those type folks. Is that? Yes, the Musers. Um, the Musers. Uh, yeah, they're more hobby, kind of uh, beginner, maybe maker fair, yeah, ma maker maker esque, um, you know, STEM programs, all that type of stuff. I mean, you can still do awesome things with it it's just you know it's a 45 watt laser um but you know we'll, we'll have a new muse coming soon oh really what uh when's the new one coming out are you, are you able to talk about it no, no can't talk about it <laughs> okay uh, so the cool thing about the music i always see people use them i always feel like the interface of it is for, like really friendly for people that maybe don't have much experience with it like do you guys get really deep just into like the usability and like how easy something is to get from like idea to like a finished product we do um and we try to make it streamlined as possible um th there's things that i think we've all used lasers for so long that we kind of take for granted and not think oh you know that's intuitive because to us we're so biased you know to me i, I feel like i could run any laser you know and yeah. just figure it out um and that's not fair to our customers because not all of them have that background so you know to me it's just one of those things like i've known it for so long that um i i want to say we're extremely uh catering towards that but i do i do know we can do better and we always update the software and all right. all sorts of things for that a, a lot of our users say you know i'd really like this and you know we'll be on social media like i can't believe uh we didn't think about that you know yeah so uh we're always improving the software team keeps busy for sure yeah i asked because so i've got one of like the cheap 50 watt lasers that like come from china uh, that you're always afraid you're going to electrocute yourself. And so like yesterday I had like a switch pop off and I'm like, I don't even know how to replace a switch on my like just crazy laser. It's like, it, it takes a lot of like tinkering around to get the thing to work. And then when I see like stuff like them use, I'm like, oh man, that thing is way, way easier to use. Yeah, and I think that's the, you know, the point is that's how we started is these lasers were so hard to use. And, um, and we just over the years made them better and better and better. Um, and, but that's how our company started is that that same thing is taking these uh, cheap lasers and changing out the control card and software, making them work. Um, 
I, I, I just kept thinking about those Chinese lasers. They nobody ever says that they have a brand. You know, there's no brand. It's there just, is no brand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody just says, you know, I got the the blue Chinese laser. Like, right. What up, dog? What about you? Like, I don't know how to work on this thing. And that's always the case. Is like they don't know how to. There's there is a community, but I I feel like it, it it's you know like it's not as helpful as the actual community. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's a lot of tinkering. Like you, people will say like K40 if they talk about like the smaller ones, but that's not even a brand. That's just like a type, like the 40 watt laser. So. Yeah. Yeah. K40. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. So, uh, one thing I definitely would ask you about, um, to give you some background. So I edit, uh, the making it podcast that has Jimmy DeResta on it. And it was like oh. a year ago or that he had, I think William Osmond on or somebody. And they were talking about bandsaws and lasers. And he's like, will you help me build a laser bandsaw? And I was like, after after that that didn't happen, I'm like, oh, is he ever gonna build one? And then I see like you show up in his stories, building a laser bandsaw, and I'm like, this is crazy. So how did your uh, relationship with with uh, Jimmy start? Uh, Jimmy actually had a old fifth gen laser from I believe the drunken woodworker, I believe, and um, it was gifted to him. And at the time, I remember Jimmy saying something like. You know, I don't know how to new, use these newfangled tools and stuff because he's a man with his hands. Right. And uh, so he went to get a new laser after he was done with that one. And he actually went to purchase it from us. And the marketing manager at the time said, hey, I know that name. And we ended up hooking up with him, getting him a Muse. And yeah, it, it's just taken off from there. I, I remember he had a muse. He, we met him up at Maker Faire, uh, and he was just hanging out at our booth for a long time. And, um, you know, we, we were just talking back and forth, and the laser bandsaw came up. And Nick, at the time, was marketing manager. He's like, if anybody can create a laser bandsaw, it's this guy. And... <laughs> uh, I was like, you know, my my uh, nerd juices got tingling, and I was like, absolutely, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah. You know, like how many times? I think anybody with a laser has been like, man, I wish this could just be like a laser pencil or something. Right, right. Um, I, I mean, my brother, he's a total nerd, and we've talked about that same thing. So as soon as that got brought up, my eyes lit up, and I was like, yes, let's do it. Uh, so me getting involved was super easy. Jimmy was all about it, but I, I guess it was on my side convincing, um, you know, the uh, higher ups. That it, <laughs> it, it, it was something worth doing. And I mean, it, it was extremely awesome. I, I loved every part of it. And I we, we tried to ham it up and make it seem like it's, you know, all jerry rigs and stuff. But there's not really much to it. Right. right. There's a laser power supply lens. Uh, and water, not really much going on there, but um, it, it it was extremely fun. I loved every part of it. I loved hanging out with Jimmy, and, and I thought you know he'd be more part of it. But he's making, he's doing. He he, we got him a brand new laser as well, so he's working with his big forty eight by thirty six laser, and you know we're building this bandsaw. And I was like, hey, you want to be a part of this video at all? And he's you know he's just making away. Right, right. That that guy's that guy's a madman. I yeah. don't know. I don't know anybody who like has the energy because I love making. I've always loved making things. And it's the fact this guy wakes up you know way before everybody else, and he's already in his workshop just making away. You know, I'm waking up at 1030, you know, and <laughs> I go to put together the laser bandsaw with Tim and I'm like, my goodness, this guy's full speed all the time, which is super awesome. I, I love it. And it, I kind of feel he, he's the same way. He's like, you know what? I, I just feel like making this right now. So I'm going to make it. And he starts making a video. Yeah. Um, and so it was attached to like one of the older, like a, one of the older, like big bandsaws. Is that right? Yeah, he, he had a, like an old turn of the century bandsaw, I believe. And uh, we took the blade off and essentially just you know, laser cut some brackets for right. it and zip tied the thing to it. If you see the video, like I tried to make it look even more janky <laughs> by, uh, by like just leaving the electrical tape on the top. Yeah. Just like I, I wanted it to seem halfway done. And he was going to, and he actually is going to redo it with a different uh, bandsaw. 
and you know build the brackets and all that but he's a busy man i, I can't wait to see that one it'll be a permanent fixture right oh, cool. now right now it's temporary he still needs to use that bandsaw right right yeah when i was watching the video like i hadn't seen i guess a, a much of your guys stuff yet and so i was like who is this this guy's crazy like, like you said like the electrical tape so you definitely made it look more jarring but then when i started digging into it, i'm like oh wait he works for full spectrum so they're not just like throwing something together i don't think they would let him do that but <laughs> yeah. yeah it looks it looked really cool yeah it's funny because you know we, we oh they're so busy making laser band saws it's like <laughs> I, it, the, the whole experience was probably one of my favorite things I've done in a long time. Uh, Jimmy's awesome. Yeah. This, the, this, the whole thing. Uh, if you guys like, if anybody ever gets a chance to go to like one of his maker camps, I suggest it. There's just good people and it's just, it's just an all around like awesome thing. Yeah. Yeah. So odd, the, the practicality side of things like is even something like that, like, would you be like, like I could actually use that versus just a traditional bandsaw or just a traditional laser cutter? I think it actually does have its really? use. Okay. Um, because, you know, you have to go into a piece of wood with a saw. You have to go into it. If it's something that you want to get in the center without, you know, getting there, I think sure. it does actually have a use. Um, real uses, I think I would probably just use a laser. Yeah. Uh, um, but you, you could come up with it. it right. It's one of those things like if you don't have the tool, you don't think about using it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I do think it has a place in the in the future to be a real thing. That so that's going to be the the muse the second version that you can't talk about is really yeah. you're attaching it out in the open yeah yeah so muse laser bandsaw coming through <laughs> cannot cannot wait for that uh, so on the more of the marketing side of things so I know you guys have YouTube channel you guys are making lots of projects um, but kind of what's your your day to day look like now at, at Full Spectrum um. I've been concentrating on more outreach. Like I, I feel like we have a lot of great content um, and we've been pumping out great content. It's just, I feel like not a lot of people know about us. Um, so mostly outreach, I, I, I want to still focus on content. I think, I think that and customer service is key to having a good company. Um, you know, so I'm on Facebook. I, I think people get a kick that, you know, oh, the guy from the videos is helping me fix his laser, my laser as well. Yeah. You know, and as soon as they realize, oh, it's it's the Walker. I think it's extreme. <laughs> it's extremely funny, you know, because uh, I mean, my only real fans, my mom, and she doesn't even watch the show. So, um, no, it, it this whole uh, manager thing is totally new to me. I'm, I'm to be honest, I'm kind of just. Uh, I've always been just a maker, kind of. Uh, stuck to myself, one of those reclusive kind mm. of maker guys. That, um, but yeah, my day to day is um, mostly mostly helping people try to get our image up um, because a lot of times people like, I mean, with uh, human beings, they like to complain, right? Um, when you see a review on a movie or something right. like that, it, it's typically negative. Nobody just sits and, oh my gosh, I loved it so much. You know, like nobody wants to hear how much you love a product. Right, right. Um, it's just, you know, so those types of things I like to get out. People, people do love what we're doing and we get better every day. So that I, I kind of want to push that and have that outreach where like, okay, these guys are different. They're doing different stuff. And uh, I, I feel like building that community is extremely important. Yeah, yeah. On the the maker side of things and the hobbyists, like, are there are there other folks that you guys do projects with? Like, there, if folks want to like look up like projects like you did with Jimmy, or is he kind of like a unique case? Um, absolutely not. I'm all for it. Um, I'm all for getting together, doing projects. You know, somebody has a YouTube channel. They want to hook up with the laser guys at full spectrum. I'm all down for that. We have people that submit projects to us. Hey, oh, can cool. you pl please share this. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a project catalog. It's, I think, over 100 now. Oh, geez. Yeah, we used, to, we used to pump them out. I made at least two projects a week that we covered on the show. 
and we pumped those out for a while. We we hit a hundred and we kind of slowed down. We're like, you know, over a hundred projects. You right, know? right. Yeah, um, hundred one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, we also share projects that we have a couple of makers that just you know we sponsor that they share their projects and you know make a little cute video for us. So we're all about um, collaborating, building you know that community. And just overall, I think lasers are fun. They're an awesome yeah. product. Um, they they do mean business. If you want if you want to mass produce something, uh, it is very easy to do. You just you know copy paste, hit play, and you're good to go. So there is a business side of it, but um, and we do tend to kind of focus on the fun side. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think uh, that that's my problem. Uh, yeah. But I think if you're having fun, uh, people see that you're having fun. It's just, you know, it's overall, um, you know, infectious. Right, right. So you did mention the business a little bit. Um, are there, like, what are things that people will, like, do small batches of that aren't, like, big businesses? Like, are folks, like, laser engraving wallets or, like, is there something kind of common you see a lot of people do? If folks do want to kind of get into this world and want to make some money from it. Um. I mean, there are so many things. It's it's crazy. There there are people who just make the their states coasters, like, um, you know, engraving stone and tiles. Some guy he takes his uh, muse, removes the floor, and then he just engraves already laid down tiles in people's like. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah. So it, the the applications are crazy and. Like we said before, it's hard to kind of convey that to the general public that there are so many things you can do with this thing. Um, but yeah, uh, sadly, we do see a lot of coaster making. <laughs> sadly. Hey, but if it sells, then people can make the money from it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, yeah. And that's fine. But uh, I, I do see a lot of earrings, I think. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, earrings. Um, hmm, trying to think about other things we see live laugh love we see a lot we see a lot of cursive live laugh love you know pieces for the wall yeah something, something you'd see at joann's or michael's right right yeah you can sell that on etsy and hopefully make money we'll see oh yeah for the live laugh love people yeah, yeah yeah for sure now um you guys also sell 3d printers right we used to, we used to not, okay. yeah not so much anymore we still have the resin um just the 3d printer game is so um saturated really and, yeah and i mean we have so many products we and the lasers just are doing well might as well you know be laser focused and just focus on those lasers uh because yeah the 3d printers i think form labs has kind of just dominated yeah. in the sla game and that's awesome i mean i i love their product so it it's just it was hard to compete, honestly, because they're bumping out one product consistently right. while we have just a slew of products we're constantly upgrading. So, yeah, I, I do miss the 3D printers. That's where my passion came from originally. But, you know, the SLAs are actually kind of messy. I, I don't like yeah. the smell of re resin. I don't like it on my fingers. And then, it, you know, it gets in your mouth. Um but we do we do still sell them occasionally, but it's just um, mainly lasers. Mainly lasers. So, what's the range of power that you guys have on the laser side? So we have a forty watt, and then we go to forty five, and then it goes up to ninety one, what one twenty one fifty, okay. and then and that's for the CO two lasers, and then we have the fiber lasers, the fiber engravers. We have a twenty watt and a fifty watt. And then we have the compact fibers, which I believe are like 200 watt fiber lasers. That's crazy. So for people that haven't been around like a fiber laser versus a CO2, like how does it, how do those work compared to a CO2 laser? Uh, so it's a totally different laser. It's uh, the frequency is different and it only affects really dense materials like okay. metals, dark, dark as well. Um, Fiber laser, typically when you think fiber laser, you're thinking metal engraving, metal cutting. That's cool. Yeah. Is it, um, how does it compare to like a plasma cutter? Like, is it, is it the same idea or is it totally different? It's different. Is it different? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's interesting you bring that up because um, plasma cutters, 
aren't like okay because in the future we're coming out with something awesome i can't talk about it it's very <laughs> secret but uh the actual metal fiber cutters the metal cutters yeah the lasers they are extremely precise yeah and the cleanup is so small uh a plasma has a ton of slag right i mean the curve is huge you're gonna have to clean this thing up like crazy um and then the lasers something i can't talk about right now but they have very very beautiful like and the details crazy with a plasma you couldn't cut like a uh, mandala this big right right uh with a ton of details and with the fiber lasers you can i mean it, it it's just refined a refined plasma cutter you know it, it, and it's if you want to say that yeah yeah so the muse 2 is a laser bandsaw refined metal plasma fiber cutter is, is you, what's coming out right you got it that's perfect uh on the so on the fiber what's the thickest that that you could like realistically cut through like i'm just trying to because I, I haven't been around fiber lasers at all and so mm. it's this is cool so it really uh depends on your wattage but the one the compact that we sell you can cut up to quarter inch steel Good Lord. um uh no problem that's crazy we've done three-fourths uh it, it does get a little bit of slag at that point it's not as clean but still much cleaner than plasma um it's it's just it, it is amazing and we do actually have a muse fiber so a muse oh, cool. it's exactly like the muse but it's a fiber laser and that's typically for engraving metals and right. whatnot because a lot of people don't understand you know they go oh the muse fiber this thing's like a crazy powerful muse right and it's just a totally different beast. It, it it engraves metal and, you know, some other things well. But typically, it's for depth engraving. A lot of the gun guys love it because uh, they can cool. put, you know, the Second Amendment on their rifle or whatever. Right, 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 right. Yeah, because I guess because you said it's more of the frequency. So I guess like the, the those frequencies wouldn't work as well for what a CO2 you typically use for. <laughs> Yeah, it, it the actual source gets absorbed, and it when you actually do uh, like a white piece of something, it, it doesn't really affect it. Um, it it's very interesting. There's there's an awesome video on YouTube describing how a fiber laser works, and it will blow your mind. It sounds like they're speaking gibberish. Yeah, it's just like the science behind it is crazy, and the words they use are so ridiculous. It, it seems like a joke video, you know, like. What is it, gangster god machine? Like, right, it's, right, right. It's ridiculous. So, uh, so speaking of of YouTube, if people want to check out some of the projects specifically, like you guys have done, like, are there any good ones? You mentioned the Kraken already, but any other ones that you recommend people checking out? Um, we also have uh, Tim just did a what is that? He just did a man. What Mandalorian? Okay, yeah. Laser. Okay, like he, he did the blaster. Oh, cool. Uh, so he he broke that into slices and just made it work and put it all together and put some PVC and it's like an awesome cosplay prop. So we got the Mandalorian blaster, and then Tim also did the laser gun. Okay, um, which is funny. I, I joke that Tim just loves making gun props. Weapons. Yeah, yeah. He's like a total LARPing nerd uh just all about that cosplay and that's kind of what led us to do that cosplay video as well yeah yeah the, you said that was batman the one yeah yeah we just we just came out with it, it, it you know it's supposed to be fun uh, some people thought it was like is this a serious video it's like <laughs> no we're just being goofballs right right so do you guys still do uh the weekly show yeah we do the weekly show it's uh wednesdays 4 p.m pacific time okay every gotcha. week every week except this week gotcha which if this uh, actually recorded which it should have uh, we'll have that uh, yeah yeah well cool man well uh well i appreciate you you jumping on and uh and chatting uh yeah. real cool to see not only what like what you guys are making over there but like personally the projects you guys are put out are are really cool no i i appreciate it i uh 
I love talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> My usually favorite guess, subject. Usually guests I have on, like they don't have a hard time talking. Yeah. But uh, for, so you mentioned the videos, but just full spectrum in general, the website, is that the best best place you send people to check yeah. everything out? Uh, FSLaser.com. You can check us out. We have YouTube channel. Um, all, all this stuff links to one another. Um, our contents mostly on YouTube and Facebook. Okay. So cool. I, I would definitely check out the Facebook because that's got like the most raw stuff on it. Got it. Sweet. Well, man, well, thank you so much for uh, for jumping on and chatting. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's do it some other time. Totally.